this year is for historic business. This year the award is going to Metal Art Dairy. The dairy was started in 1919 by Walter Briggs at the site of today's El Viso Adobe. It was the one, at one time the only certified dairy in the state of California. In 1950, Janus and Jana Takens immigrated from Holland. They found work at the dairy and eventually were able to buy the dairy in 1965. They kept it going there for three years and then in 1968 moved the operation out to Tracy. 450 cows, 200,000 gallons of milk a day from those animals. Um, they added a pasteurizing barn at the corner of Railroad and Neal with a small drive through that would sell milk and other staples. Bruce and his co-workers uh, Bruce's Yana and Yana's son devised a soft serve ice cream and it quickly became a hit with the customers. Now, 50 years later, great grandparents are bringing their great grandchildren back to enjoy this piece of Pleasanton nostalgia. So, we wanted to recognize the Metal Art Dairy and the Takens family for bringing this piece of history and keeping this piece of history alive in our community. So Bruce, Patty. The next award this year is for Educator of the Year. The museum is an educational institution and it's really important for us to live out that mission of helping to educate our children. Um, what I would like to do is to ask last year's award winner, Nicole D'Alessio, to join us there on stage to help present this year's award. She's here. This year, the award is going to Carol Boster. <laughs> Carol, Carol has had many years of service as an educator supporting exceptional support for and dedication to formal and informal education in the areas of history and social sciences. After graduating from Ohio State, she taught in Ohio schools for a while, and then their family moved to Pleasanton. In 1886, she was hired by the school district as one of the very first elementary music school teachers. And for the third grade, that group of elementary school music teachers put together a presentation called Pleasanton Our Community. It's a musical where they put in songs along with the characters that lived here in, in, in Pleasanton. It's still being used 25 years later, so that should speak to that. In 1997, she was hired to teach third grade, and her passion for history in our community was clearly evident in how she worked with our school, stu with our school students and giving them the love and appreciation of what we have here in Pleasanton. So Carol, it's with great honor that we give you our Educator of the Year report. Thank you.
I just wanted to say that I don't feel that I earned this all by myself. Um, the music teachers back 26 years ago all got together and had the idea about the Pleasanton history. Um, I maybe was one of the leaders, but the lady who really did a fantastic job was Mrs. Jancy Reinbold, and she wrote the song, Pleasanton, Our Community. And we still sing that every year in third grade. And I was fortunate enough to meet up with her again this summer and renew acquaintances. And I want to give her credit for being a base of that play that we all wrote and performed. Um, I also would like to give my husband credit because he helped me make videos about Pleasanton to show my class. And so it's with his help also and influence um, that that's all tied up in this award. So credit where credit's due. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. The next award is for organization. And we all know that in the communities that we live in, it's often very hard to balance the preserving our community's history with progress and bringing our community along into a modern city that we would want to live in. This year's award goes to the city of Pleasanton. We felt really strongly that the city council and the city staff have done an excellent job of trying to preserve the character of our historic downtown and our community. Particularly with efforts such as Century House, with the Oviso Adobe, and if you've not been to the Oviso Adobe, you need to go and visit. It's an amazing site that is just spectacular. And more recently, with saving the old firehouse and making it into the brand new firehouse art center, it would have been very easy to just sort of bulldoze that building and put a new contemporary building in that spot. And the city chose not to do that, but to use the old structure and make it into, and add the new part to it. And I think the thing that for you, it's important for you to know, and I'm sure many of you do if you travel around the other areas and the other communities here in the Bay, is that there are a lot of communities that are not as fortunate as we do, as we are. We have a downtown. We have a downtown that people want to come and visit. And that is one of the greatest things that this community has to offer. So, we want to say thank you to the City of Pleasanton for helping us do that and for supporting the museum and all that we do um, over the years. So here accepting for the city is City Manager Nelson Fiello. community and it starts with a vision and the goals and objectives that everybody has for this community and we could not be for the community uh, we would not be the kind of city that we are it starts with all of you giving your time and energy uh, talented elected officials commissioners committees people who are focused on keeping Pleasanton what it is a great community so thank you for recognizing us hang with me just a few more Diana and Cyril Bonanno's home on St. Mary's Street could actually be a metaphor for Pleasanton itself. They kept strong ties to the past of their own while allowing the home to reflect the needs of a modern family. Their home was built in 1921 as the home of former city councilmen Ambrose Revolta and his wife Rose. Mr. Robolta, besides being a city council person, was also the superintendent of the Rimmel 
Remillard Brickworks. That family loved the house and took care of it. And over the years, it remained very much a family place, well-loved, well-cared for. The Monados bought the house in 1979, and I also loved and created a nice home for their family there. In 1995, they thought it was time for a little sprucing up, so they did some restoration, renovation, and re-landscaping to update the house with more space. And Diana actually served as a project manager for that project to make sure everything got done the way that it should be getting done. Good for you. In addition to the house, the grounds surrounding the house were re-landscaped into classic gardens with a little bit of whimsy added in. We all know how hard it is to keep our own homes up. Those that were built, in the, my home was built in 1985, and I know what a chore it is to keep that up. But imagine you keeping up a historic home, which is hundreds of years old. And so for that effort, we want to thank you and Cyril for all that you've done to keep your house a part of our beautiful community neighborhoods. Accepting is Diana Banana. He's fishing in Minnesota for what they call walleye and must be sport fishing. He will be home tonight. A lot of you don't know, but I was born and raised in Pleasanton. And I used to play in that house when it was Mr. and Mrs. Revoltus. Um, it's Carol and Antonini Cardinale's great aunt's house. And I loved it then. And when I saw it, it was going out for sale. I came home and I said to Cyril, we're moving. <laughs> Where? I said, 517 St. Mary Street. So I'm delighted to live in that house. And thank you so much. I appreciate it. So originally built in 19, 1903 as a general store. The building was bought by the Fiorio family, Fiorio family in 1914 and opened as a market. Fiorio's was a mainstay of downtown Pleasanton for 71 years until Jack Fiorio closed his doors in 1985. In an article that Jack was quoted in when he was closing his store, he thought that the store was going to be torn down and they were going to put a three or four story office building in its place. Well, luckily, that never came to pass. Um, after the Fiorios moved out, Main Street Auto Parts was there for a few years, and then it was bought by Valley Plumbing. And Valley Plumbing was established in 1982. It was not always in that location. But when they moved into that location, I think they lived up to their company motto of integrity before profit. Again, keeping a historic building isn't cheap. And so when you make a commitment to actually keep a building in that shape, it's a real commitment. So for that, um, we're recognizing Valley Plumbing. In the, in the past several years, there have been major efforts to restore and renovate the complex of buildings on Rose Avenue, including a new period, restored period sign, neon, no less. Um, a new paint job and a phenomenal historically themed mur mur mural on the uh, building on Peter Street. So we wanted to recognize those efforts and so is there a representative from Valley Plumbing here this evening? Okay. Mike and Cheryl Cheney, um, daughter had a soccer tournament today and they were going to try to be here depending on how much she won. Must be she was doing well. So we will get the award to them uh, this week. So Valley Plumbing is our Historic Preservation Commercial winner. And our final award of the evening, I actually don't need the paper for this one. This one comes from the heart. Um, when I first 
uh, came to the museum on Maine, my office was back in the corner of the archives room, sort of tucked away behind. And every Friday afternoon, Verna Garibaldi and Barbara Wolfenberger came in to do their volunteer stint. And I sat in the back of the corner and just listened in amazement at the amount of information that these two women have in their brains about this community. As most of you know, they were both born here 87 years ago. They were friends almost from birth, <laughs> went to school together, married, married friends, had their lives together. Verna worked for um, Judge Gale for many, many years, and Barbara was the secretary for the Presbyterian Church. Um, and when we were looking at this particular award, we just thought it needed to go to both of them together. I cannot tell you how thankful I am that I've had the opportunity to meet them and to have them a part of what we're doing at the museum. When, they can, when someone walks in and says, oh, my father was, and they go into the whole litany of who that, who that person is and where they lived and who their children were and all this sort of stuff, it's just totally amazing to me. And so, Verna and Barbara, we want to say thank you to you, and we certainly appreciate everything that you do for us. So, Verna Garibaldi and Barbara Wolfenberg. Thank you so much for coming and enjoy yourself. 